know. Okay. Um, thank you for having us. Uh, myself and Elizabeth are thrilled uh, to be presenting to you guys today. Uh, a warm welcome to all of you. And I, I noticed there's some of our um, learning and education and enhancement team uh, also in the audience. Uh, so you'll probably see quite a few members of our team today at RIDE. Uh, really sorry we can't be there, but hopefully we can provide you with an interesting perspective on, um, on what you're thinking about in this theme. And so what we're looking at is empowering city students uh, and how we did that to collaborate effectively in a team's space. And we conducted an evaluation, so we're really thrilled to be able to present that to you today. So I just wanted to introduce Elisabetta um, uh, uh, to start us off. Um, just move the uh, thingy. Okay. So really, Elizabeth um, has uh, previous experience in further education. She's a colleague that I worked with, particularly on this project. Um, she's, you know, she's worked at various different uh, areas, you know, various different uh, bits of learning around JISC as well. Um, she's worked for offenders. So she's, you know, breadth of experience um, in sort of HE as well as FE. Um, so that's really Elizabeth. Over to you, Elizabeth. Looks like we've lost Elizabetta. Mm, I think she's... I think she's... Is she? Okay. Elizabetta, are you on mute? Okay, not to worry. <laughs> so I'll introduce myself. Um, so I've, um, I've been in sort of the um, uh, City University for, for quite a few years now. And I have two children and um, sort of working in the senior education, uh, digital education team, as we're known as. I've, I've done various projects uh, to do with the student experience, to do with learning spaces, uh, pods, you name it, I've got involved in it, um, you know, so got the sort of HEA status uh, as well as a master's in academic practice. So I bring myself and Elizabeth bring to you a, a wealth of experience. I'm hoping Elizabeth will be able to join us. Elizabeth, you, you, you back in. No, it's not that. Okay. I'll just wait a little bit because I think she is here. It... We we can see her online. Yeah. yeah. Elizabeth, are you all right? Just message her. And I think we need to move on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, we'll we'll kick you off with a um, thought provoking question, just to sort of give you an idea. And we have got a URL. Um, I'm conscious I'm sharing, so I'm not going to be able to send you the link. Um, I am just going to try and see if I can dig it out. Still not working. She's stuck off. Okay, so she's trying to get back in. Um, let's see what the URL, uh, if she can pop it in, URL. So really just a question to you guys. Um, this is really sort of, you know, if you could kind of think about if you had a space on Teams uh, to sort of, you know, incorporate in your learning and teaching for your students, what would you include as part of your planning to help the students to connect with each other, to help them to feel safe and to engage with their learning. So I'm conscious there might be a few thoughts in the audience. It is quite a big question. It might involve you to think, but this is really the essence of our presentation to you today. So over to you. If there's any thoughts coming from the audience or on the chat, I'll try and manage both. Might need Stephen's help. What do you need to see? I can't see anything in. Um, oh, there's there's one comment icebreaker. popped up in chat it says an icebreaker activity. Yeah, if you um, there is basically. So let me just scroll on. There is a URL. Sorry, apologies. So for the for the people in the audience, if you want to zap that UR uh, that uh, QR code, that will take you through to the actual survey. Uh, it's a forms or a, a forms uh, Microsoft forms uh, which we use on Teams. If you can give me a 
I can't see the chat or anything. So if you can just give me a yes, we can kind of see the QR code. We can see the link. That Please. might help. See the QR code. Brilliant. Is the QR code working? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, That's working. Fabulous. Okay. <clears throat> Things are there. Thank you. Great. Yeah. We've got a we've got yeah. a start box on our screens that says you've switched language. Can you see that? No, no, I can't. No, you should, can you see the presentation still? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's gone now. Okay. It's, it's, it's basically because Elizabeth is managing the forms, um, so I do need her to be on. Um, <laughs> we hadn't thought that that might actually happen. Hopefully she'll be back on. Elizabeth, any chance of you managing the forms? If you can hear us. We might have to move on. Ray, we only have 10 more minutes for speaking, if that's okay. I'm really sorry, the icebreaker, sadly, because Elizabeth's um, internet has been playing up. So <laughs> that that we hadn't figured that out. We will cover. Uh, our evaluation report. We have some key points that we'd like to touch through. We probably think we'll we'll finish off in 10 minutes. Uh, really sort of the interesting part is what's been the impact of the report? You know, what what work has been carried out at City after that? So I think you'll be interested to hear that. And then hopefully uh, an action key point that you would take away from our presentation today. So as we know, we had the pandemic and uh, obviously during that pandemic, um, there was this um, extra teams space um, that was um, sort of an inv invitation for um, staff to take up. And it was um, something that would complement their Moodle modules. It wasn't meant to be a, a Moodle module. It was something that would complement their learning and teaching for their students. Um, and you know, staff had to actively um, ask for it to be um, activated. So that was the the issue with a separate team space. So not everyone um, agreed to activate their team sites, which is what we're trying to say. But you know, the idea was that it would be complementary in terms of their Moodle module. Um, and then, you know, so the enrollment would be pretty simplistic. Staff and students were automatically enrolled um, and the sites, you know, weren't visible to the students until they were activated by the academic teacher, uh, the actual owner. So that gives you the background. Um, our challenge was that we had very limited data because obviously this was a, a choice. You know, schools had the uh, opportunity to activate these modules. You know, it was entirely, um, you know, something that um, they needed to let us know. So they were in control. Uh, and so you can imagine that not every school, not every module in that school um, sort of activated these modules. So it's a pretty small scale study. Um, we we thought that this was a sort of an opportunity that we, we you know we'd like to find out what's going on. Um, it was. Let me know, Elizabeth, if you do come back in. Um, it, yeah, so it was a small scale study. Um, you know, we we really sort of we, we managed to get ten staff from uh, all the different subjects. Uh, and 12 students from all those different subjects as well. And so you, you can see the list there. There's law, health, business, engineering, and even our own masters in academic practice. So, you know, pretty small scale, but we, we hope that we've, we, you know, been able to get quite a lot of valuable information from it. So roughly, this is really sort of the themes that we came out with after evaluating the data that we had. Um, and I will run through um, staff and I'm hoping that uh, Elizabeth will be able to step in with students. Uh, but if not, we can continue with that. Um, we had this um, sort of uh, the, there was there was definitely an idea that staff needed to um, 
uh, we we really needed to. Um, this one of the themes was that it was really crucial that lecturers needed to um, uh, sort of almost uh, ha have an opportunity to be able to buddy swap. You know, so you had visiting lecturers who could pop into these sessions that were run. It was it was easier. Is, is, is what I'm trying to say to you in terms of lecturers being able to hop into different sessions. So it was a bit more efficient for staff uh, in terms of having the, a teaching space. Um, obviously, the remote access to all, you know, the idea um, of, you know, being able to kind of operate anywhere uh, on a team space was, uh, was a, a, one of our key themes. Um, the fact that of having sort of staff and uh, students having a collaborative space. So the opportunity to do breakouts, the opportunity to do uh, asynchronous or, you know, different types of activities. Um, you know, th there was um, uh, things like flipped learning and, you know, those various uh, different types of activities introduced in uh, the, uh, these type of teaching uh, themes. So it was a collaborative space and I think students and staff enjoyed that. Um, it was really an opportunity as well for um, staff to rethink how they teach. So a lot of um, our results sort of indicated that, it, you know, sort of, um, the sort of academic teams felt it was a real opportunity for them to almost rethink um, their learning design uh, and how they did things. Um, one of the things... Uh, last but not least that came up as well was that you know sort of you, you found that um, staff needed to it's, they needed a bit more specialist training um, and support and so that you know that that was the key theme that that was, that was perhaps a, a missed opportunity um, that they would have preferred a community of practice uh, around teams uh, you know and, and so to kind of help them to kind of explore the different challenges and uh, the different ideas that they might have had. Elizabeth are you still you still off or? Right, we've got um, a, a long text from Elizabeth with feedback. Would this be an appropriate time to put that up for you? Um. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah. So let's go through that at the end. Um. Any chance, Elizabeth, you can get on the voice? Is that no? She can't unmute herself. She can't unmute herself. It should be on the on the dial. I mean, it's it's on the three dots. Is better no, not happening. That's hot, isn't it? Okay, um, not to worry. But yeah, so um, I I will share the results because it's really interesting, and I do want to. I'll just I'll move the chat out the window because I think you might be able to see the the chat. Um, I take it Elizabeth can't talk, which is a real shame uh, because she kind of really helped around the student side of things. Um, but yeah, so sort of the, the themes for the students was really interesting as well, that they felt actually that in terms of the digital capabilities, they felt much more engaged um, in, in sort of learning uh, around uh, the team space. Uh, there was definitely sort of from them, they felt that some of the, you know, the, the lecturers that made uh, a difference, they felt it, it was really personal, they, you know, the, the experience was really personalised for them, uh, in you know, with reference to um, spending time with them individually or, you know, having smaller group breakout rooms and things like that. So they they felt like it was much more of a personalised experience, which was really interesting. Um, and then there was... Um, the, the idea of the channels and you know having a separate space for that particular module um, and having sort of uh, equivalent breakouts and things like that uh, within that channel um, really helped the students to kind of um, navigate between in the world of Teams and, and Moodle. So, you know, effectively, there was a little bit more participation um, and engagement. I think where the students, the comments were, they felt much more engaged when the lecturers were much more engaged. You know, if you felt like, if, if the lecturers kind of rethought their uh, assessments, and this is, P Puyan talked about this, you know, actually, um, if you can kind of think of this as an opportunity and rethink your learning design uh, in that type of space, it really did help the students. And, and that certainly that came, that came across uh, in our results. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. So um, briefly, I'll just go through recommendations for staff uh, and then follow up with the students as well. Um, again, as I've mentioned, um, you know, it's a real opportunity for teaching teams to work with our learning enhancement teams 
so you know that that's applicable we hope to other universities as well um there's one thing that came across in in all of our um evaluation was that students found it really helpful if the meetings were conducted in the team spaces in the team channels rather than sort of random ad hoc meetings so it's one thing that um, we've learned um you know sort of for our staff and that we take on um as we've talked about communities of practice you know it is really staff really need uh, just in time guidance um it, you know it, we can help them with that we can facilitate that through our lead learning and enhancement and development teams and it so you know certainly something that we can collaborate together on uh, by providing that just in time guidance um one thing as well that we've done as well or we'd like to recommend from this is that you know it should be introduced teams spaces or a team site as we call it should be introduced into all staff induction programs and to briefly looking at recommendation for students um, students were really keen to kind of pr um, have their own space uh, and, you know, to, to sort of the, the, there was a real theme of WhatsApp and the fact that WhatsApp is is um, is not inclusive. You know, it sort of brings across other sort of chat. And actually, there was a real thing about students wanting a safe space, a safe and inclusive space. And they felt the team site could could offer them that. Uh, and actually, by providing the university, providing them with a with a space, um, it, it, you know, is a really helpful way for them to continue on uh discussions in their teams in a much more in, in their module in a much more helpful uh, and inclusive fashion so yeah so that you know one of the th key themes was that you know students should be given uh, kind of uh, if you like um, an introduction uh, help uh, in how to facilitate their own private team groups within the channels that the module has uh, again, the same, you know, that we should introduce this to uh, team spaces should be introduced to students uh, inductions too. Uh, and we have our student uh, digital ambassadors uh, at um, uh, City University and they help to support our students digital skills. And so we've wrapped up the team spaces and team sites in that uh, in those inductions and in that support. So some quotes for you. I won't read them out. I'm hoping it's bright enough for you to look at. I'm going to get slated from my accessibility team. Um, if I'm, ho I'm hoping the colours are OK for you to look at, but just gives you an idea of what our staff and students uh, thought uh, in terms of. And you can see, you know, the collaborations, um, the idea of it being a very powerful collaboration tool. Um, you know, is is really helpful. And, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, some of the quotes about world of work, you know, a lot of our um, world of work is operating in teams, uh, is operating in, in other spaces. So actually giving them a space like that to kind of help practice uh, the, the sort of uh, employability skills is really uh, is vital. And again, there's something about peer to peer learning. So students making mistakes, seeing the transparency of what what mistakes are made. Gives, gives them an opportunity to engage with the learning. So I am conscious of time, Christina, so don't worry. Um, just briefly, the, this is really sort of, I, I'm, I'm hopefully telling you a bit more about the impact uh, that Teams, uh, the team sites has had and that briefly gives you uh, a list of programs that use Teams in teaching. Was there someone coming in? No, you're fine. So, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we've got um, sort of a huge range. Of, well, I, I, don't, I don't mean that. I mean about, you know, three to four programs at least are using it for pre-placement, pre-induction uh, type of module because, as we know, Moodle doesn't allow a pre-entry module. So that's been really helpful for certain those type of um, uh, programs that want to kind of introduce uh you know some of the some of the programs, some of the overlay, uh, without kind of giving them access to Moodle straight away. So the team sites has been really helpful to almost initiate um, students before they've come into higher education. So there's that. Then there's the um, collaborative type of activities, as you can see lower down on the list, where certain programs like barrister training, business programs, um, you know, sort of uh, solicitors, uh, actuarial science have have created 
kind of collaborative documents that students can you know kind of work together on and so what it does is it helps students to kind of you know form teams um you know present together work on um sharing good practice learning from each other all that sort of stuff and you know one of the key impacts that we've had is that our um our evaluation uh, was used uh, to help uh, with our student inductions um, this year. So we had um, our digital team, student digital team uh, assistants, as we call them, and they created some resources off the back of our evaluation uh, to help our students uh, to think about you know, using a team space for group work. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's been taken up. Uh, a lot of our uh, students are now thinking of how they can, you know, manage a space and use it uh, to complement their learning. So there's uh, on the side, you can see the leaflet that, that has been created uh, for Welcome Week. So, yeah, so I've hopefully kept within the yeah, two minutes left. I can share the results with you. Um, just final thoughts, um, but maybe we can just literally go back. As you're thinking about that, uh, we can continue to think about uh, the feedback from you. Um, so going back to the first question, which was quite a big question, we do realize that. But what we were trying to do is get you in that space to think about what would you do to kind of incorporate you know, getting your students to connect and collaborate and to feel safe and to feel like they belong. And you came up with, um, yeah, ways of contacting staff with any issues. Absolutely. Having a sort of extra space is, is really valuable for the students. Um, having a discussion space. Yeah, we, we were hoping you'd say that. File space, definitely, uh, you know, sort of, I guess, sort of working out what can go on team site and working out what has to stay on Moodle, you know, so because I, I suspect most of you have the same sort of assessment type space as well. Um, polling, absolutely. It's, you know, it's a useful way to do things. Um, having chat uh, between staff and students uh, is a really helpful thing. Um, and then self-contained sites, yes, uh, only for students. Uh, I, I, I get that perspective. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and we've talked about that th throughout our evaluation. It's kind of having, giving that sort of um, safe space for the students uh, is absolutely key because otherwise they gravitate towards WhatsApp. Um, yeah, there's more. So um, thank you, Elisabetta. I know that she would have been here. So she's really probably very upset that her technology is broken down uh, but please do look at the chat um just yeah we're just gonna <laughs> uh we're just gonna um just yeah over to you audience you know i'm just gonna stop sharing um oh unless you've got the forms there um but yeah it'd be really good to sort of yeah i know elizabeth has got a sad face i'm, I'm and i think we're very sorry that she wasn't able to join but i'm gonna just stop sharing so i can see the audience um and hopefully I'm back in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just final thoughts. What's the one thing that you would take away from this session? 